Welcome to the bold analysis. I am following, um, I'm doing this a follow up analysis on the Afia House um, scandal touching on the mosquito net tender that really rippled UDA right in the middle. And I'm doing that for this follow up analysis because. I paid close attention and I said that while President William Ruto showed a good precedence by sucking those who are directly linked or to some sort of um, corruption because that was, uh, that was setting a good precedence. But that needed, that can only be confirmed or his commitment to fight graft can only be confirmed by a goodwill at investigation and prosecution. And so today, um, Kemsa, uh, not Kemsa, Principal Secretary, uh, Josephine Buru, who was sacked by the President uh, in the wake of the Kemsa scandal, appeared in the National Assembly, in the Senate team investigating the botched 3.7 billion tender at the Kenya Medical Supplies Authority, Kemsa. And she was appearing there asking for a fair hearing. Now, why she was actually accused, what she was accused of is writing a letter to the board of Kemsa, I think the chair of the board of the Kemsa, asking for extension of the tendering uh, deadline from probably it was supposed to end on 23rd May, February to subsequent uh, March, that is 10th, 15th, uh, 15th March. So she wrote that letter and again, Kemsa then adjusted, adjusted uh, the Kemsa authority, the Kemsa board then adjusted the time. And within that adjustment, there was also calls for the tender document, the description to be altered a bit, some changes to be made there so that it could suit some potential supplier that was being targeted. So that is why this lady was, that is what, what that lady was being accused for uh, commissioning that letter. Today while appearing in the Senate, she is a very giving a very interesting team. She said that she learned about her suck, sucking through a bit of social media and absolved herself from the blame, claiming that Principal Secretary Peter Toom, who has since been moved to the Ministry of Youth Affairs, Arts and Sports, was in charge of, medic of medical services during the botched 3.7 billion tender. And according to her, um, that is the person that was coordinating closely with the KEMSA and not her. In what she's actually saying that she was uh, sacked by mistake, that she was not the person to be sacked. I don't know whether you want to believe that there is a bit of a mistake. She might be seeing a mistake um, that she was mistaken, but is that the position of his boss? He was suspended, uh, he was suspended, uh, also the chief executive, Mrs. Terry Ramadani, as part of the overhaul of the uh, of KEMSA, uh, Health Cabinet Secretary Susan Nahumisha also went home after, uh, of, uh, sent home other affected senior staff working the, under the National Malaria Program and KEMSA at the Ministry of Health. <coughs> I want to say something. I think MOH has become a crime scene and it's a slaughter. Just today there is also some 5 billion talk where a whistleblower is asking for expenditures for the budget to be scrutinized deeper to unravel the devil, the devil <coughs> to unravel some finer details of what is hidden in that budget. So Madam uh, Principal Secretary, um, former Principal Secretary, Secretary Joseph Josephine Mburu is saying that um, that was not it. Uh, she was dismissed by mistake. 
you know uh, this article is talking about uh, the splitting of global fund into two has exposed the fight between two arms of the Ministry of Health for the control of the millions of Adana funds. According to information, former Principal Secretary Peter Tum, who has since been moved to the Ministry of Health, was in charge of medical services, while the PS, Josephine Buru, was in charge of State Department for Public Health and Professional Standards. It all started when the two were sworn into office in the middle of the current financial year and a resolution was made and a resolution when the two were sworn into office and a resolution was made that Mr. Tum would be the signatory of all the Ministry of Health documents. This did not sit well with Dr. Mburu who is, the, is in a Senate Health Committee meeting held in Mombasa held a separate private meeting where she claimed that she was just a flower girl at the ministry and even the dockets within the ministry were being signed, documents were being signed by Toom. Then another incident revealed that they had been there had been a rift between the two PS, principal secretaries, before a reshuffle was effected that saw Dr. Dr. Mburu sucked and Toom moved to the sports docket. Considering that the public health docket controls all the donor funding for the malaria, tuberculosis and HIV, there were complaints that led to the decision to split the program. And it is now emerging clearly that Toom was fronted to be the principal uh, the accounting officer. The same story of accounting that was at the office of Musala Mudavadi has come here. I remember Esther Ngero, Ngero. Um, she was moved from uh, Regeni Gashoga's office to that of to, to be in charge of principal secretary in charge of correctional services at Kitori Kendiko's office, uh, ministry, because there was a fallout between herself and Aurenia Rono, Rono on who was to be the accounting officer in that ministry. And Ruto opted for Rono. Then at the Ministry of Health, the same story of people fighting and scrambling for, for who to be the accounting officer. There is no denial or there is no magic that uh, people are fighting to who is to become the accounting officer because that's a very influential position. However, the coincidence that the two, both at the Ministry of Health, it is two, and at Musal Mudavadi, it is Rono, and that those who are accounting officers are people from President's backyard. That coincidence is what, according to me, is a red alarm. And um, maybe uh, they need to rationalize um, in terms of who is holding the positions of HR, procurement, and accounting. Those three positions, HR, procurement, and accounting, they're the backbone of every ministry or any organization or every company. So. This is something that you have to look at. I really sympathize with this lady. If indeed this lady was sacked while she was not the one to really face the sack, that's something that is really regrettable now. Um, I have said you, she directed that Kemsa CEO Terry Ramadani re advertised the tender setting inconsistencies, inconsistencies in the process of tendering. Then these inconsistencies were flagged by the Global Fund saying that um, someone who was qualified or a company which was qualified to supply was actually denied the tender and what was done was against the law. Now, paying attention to this, it is something that is not good, doesn't look ethically right if really the person that was shown the door is not the person that was supposed to make that exit because you cannot mutilate people's careers that way. You know, if for those who've been in government, if you're sucked one place and afraid to get another job, you really need good political, you really need political goodwill. Mm -hmm. I wonder whether it is true that President William Goodwill is hands on. Because this is clearly pointing out the direct executive influence in these ministries. If the president got a brief of what exactly had been happening there, 
or he had been briefed because I don't think the thing started there. Um, Buru is saying the very morning she lost her job. She was with the president. She actually met the president the morning, but there was nothing. Uh, she had not been told anything. So the executive influence in that scandal is something that you cannot underestimate or underscore because that could be the virus. Those who have close access to William Ruto might have really did something to make sure that um, uh, this lady is shown the door. But then, sucking and even uh, sending packing the members of this KEMSA and around this scandal could have been a strategy to have high profile, to hatch a high profile cover up. Yes. You cannot underestimate that. There is a high profile cover up and people just wanted to cover what had exactly had been going on so that it would not leak out. And I don't want to tell you that sometimes when you see reactions like sucking people, it serves the purpose of putting the matter to a closure they get closing avenues of probing because immediately that is done there is one word that will be told that ECC or so and so is starting investigation the moment you are told investigation has started then technically media is locked out and so media cannot query or cannot probe further what exactly is going on there lastly this could have been a setup here and it was a setup with a predetermined outcome. Probably, and this lady um, is saying it is so and so who was supposed to be responsible. But because there was a fight for control, um, why did that Dr. Tum then write that letter? That letter was written by someone else. And because she has not denied writing the letter asking for extension of the tender and also revising the quality revising the description of um, the, the, what was to be supplied. She has not denied that part. But if she did it, and maybe it is something that did not fall under, fall under her docket, then it is clearly that she was set up. Knowing very well that even if this tender was to go through, but this will at one point come back and haunt him, haunt her, and will make an exit. So this fight... So these fights um, can really derail government, to say the truth. They can really derail government. And I think, as we say, that president is trying to be hands-on. This is a very wrong precedence. Because people then work with insecurity of tenure. Am I going to, when am I going to be sacked? And, and even if you're making any decision you're making, you seem to be making it under some sort of a fear that am I being set up? So I wish that um, when this matter is brought to its logical conclusion, those who are those who are ready, those who are culprits should actually be held to account. So so that we don't mutilate people's careers by allowing others to carry uh, cross a cross that actually should not belong to them. That's my take.